Hey guys, welcome back. So it's been over a month since I made my last video, but today I'm back and today I'm going to show you guys how you can get started with some iOS kernel research if you are interested in becoming an expert developer or security researcher. So on this channel so far, in the past we've covered various different things uh, relating to exploitation and we've even covered the exploitation of a real life kernel bug here, if you've seen this video, uh, the uh, CVE 2016-4655 info leak in the OS unserialized binary function. Uh, so watch this video if you haven't already, but today we're going to be taking a look at more of a generic kind of uh, video. So instead of focusing on a specific bug, today we're showing you guys how you can write a simple program or a simple tool that's going to give you the ability to mess around with the kernel and actually experiment and find out new things by yourself. So essentially what it's going to be is a simple program that allows you to read and write kernel memory. So you can basically manipulate the memory in any way you want, meaning you can apply your own patches to the kernel um, during its runtime. Uh, you can read memory from arbitrary addresses and find out where things are located and find out various different things and uh, overall just experiment with it. So I found this to be a great learning tool for just finding out more things about the kernel itself and I've been uh, using one that I made the past couple of days now. So I thought it would be a good idea to make a video to show you guys who are interested in this how you can write your own very simple tool. So how exactly is this going to work? Well, we're basically going to use uh, the kernel task port to access, access its virtual memory and then use VM write and VM read to read and write from the memory. Now, to access the kernel task port, you do obviously need the task for PID0 patch applied on your jailbroken device. So you will need a jailbroken device, of course, and you need to make sure that it does have that specific patch applied because some jailbreaks, I believe Pangu, the original Pangu 9 untethered jailbreak, that doesn't have the patch applied. And there are a couple others that don't have that patch applied. So make sure your device does have the task for PID0 patch applied, otherwise you won't be able to do this. Um, but once you've got that ready, we can go ahead and get started. So we're just going to uh, stick to a simple command line tool, although you can pack this into uh, sort of a GUI application later on, which I will show you guys at the end of this video. So we're going to start by creating a simple uh, C program. So we're just going to create, let's just call this uh, tool.c. So we're going to open up this C file inside of Xcode, and we're going to start by including uh, the standard set of headers as well as the muck.h, which is going to allow us to use the VM read and VM write uh, muck API calls to allow us to actually manipulate the virtual memory of the kernel. So uh, once those are included, we're going to start with the first function that we're going to use in this tool, which is going to be the actual function that grabs the kernel task port. So this will return uh, an int and we'll just call this get kernel task. And uh, all this needs to do is call task for PID and pass zero as the process ID to grab the task port for. And as long as you do have that patch applied successfully in your jailbroken device, it should return the, the kernel task port without any kind of issue. So to do this, we're going to we're going to first of all create a kern return type variable, let's call this kr, and also a muck port type variable to actually store the uh, the task port once it's been returned. And I'm going to just going to call task for pid. So we'll set kr equal to the return of task for pid, and we'll pass in the first argument will be muck host self uh, to get um, our current processes host port. Then we're going to pass in zero, which is the process ID of the kernel. Now you can actually do this for any process running on the device. So you could do this for Springboard or LaunchD or any other app that's running. So just as long as you know the process ID, but for the kernel it's zero. And then we want to actually pass in the task, the muck port um, type we just created by reference. Make sure you put an ampersand in front of that. And uh, that will call task for PID. Now we're going to actually quickly do a quick check to see, um, to make sure this does return successfully so we can just put an if statement around this and if it does not return kern success then that basically means there's been an issue so it probably means you're either not running as root um, the correct entitlements were not set or simply the task for pid0 patch does not exist on the device so we'll just in that case return error um, and that's basically done so if it does return though we're just going to return the actual value of the task port so that is the first function this should grab the kernel task port as I said, as long as you have the patch correctly applied. So we'll just quickly create our main function and uh, we'll call this. So we'll create int kernel task equals get kernel task. So uh, that's the first step done. This will call the kernel ta uh, call task with zero, grab us the kernel task port, now giving us the ability to manipulate the kernel memory. Now, how do we actually do that? Well, we use VM read and VM write. Now, the one most of you guys are probably more excited about is going to be VM write because this is going to allow you to apply patches to the kernel and basically manipulate the memory in any way you want. You can overwrite parts of the memory, you can overwrite variables, overwrite strings, anything in the kernel you can overwrite with arbitrary bytes. So to do this we're going to create another function. So this function name will just be uh, write test 
um, and this can just be avoided. We don't need to return anything from this. Uh, but what this will do is essentially call VM write from the uh, Mac API and uh, write an arbitrary uh, bytes, whatever we choose, um, to an arbitrary memory address within the kernel. So uh, the way it works, we're going to first uh, create an unsigned int variable to store the data we want to actually write. So to keep it generic and simple, we'll just go with 414141. Um, and you obviously you can replace this with whatever value you want um, if you're actually attempting to do some kind of real patch or something like that. But this will be fine for the, the purposes of this demonstration. Then we want to call VM write, and this takes four arguments. Now it actually takes the kernel task port, which we would have returned. So we do need to take in a parameter here. So this will just be uh, int task, and then when we call write that run write test down here we need to pass in the kernel task just so it's got access to it and there we go so we want our first argument to be this actual task port to the kernel uh, so that it knows where to get the virtual memory mappings from then we want the address inside the kernel so inside the virtual memory uh, space of the kernel so we will do a uh, typecast to vm address t and then we'll just put the address of uh, a place in the kernel we want to overwrite. Now, to locate your addresses in the kernel, you're obviously going to need a kernel dump or a kernel cache file that's decrypted. So I'm going to use Hopper. And uh, if we just open up Hopper here. So I've got a couple of decrypted kernel cache files here. So I'm going to use this one for the iPhone 4 running iOS 7.12. Now, this will be very specific to the device and version you're using. So make sure you do download one specific to the device you are targeting. Uh, we're just going to open this and allow it to disassemble for a couple seconds. Now in here is where you will find the addresses to whatever you want to target. So if you want to apply a patch to an actual function in the kernel, then obviously it's going to move in the text segment or the code segment. Uh, you can also just do variables or strings. If you just want to mess around and test things, then I recommend starting off with uh, a basic string or something that you can easily check. Now one of the good examples I've found is the actual kernel version string. So this is the first thing that comes up in the string section. But this is actually what you will see when you run the uname-a command. Uh, through mobile terminal or through SSH on your device. It will actually display the kernel information using the string that is at this address in the kernel. So if you uh, write some arbitrary bytes over this string, then when you run uname a the kernel version uh, string will be different or altered. So this is how people have actually faked the kernel version in the past, um, but you can use this as a simple test. So we're going to use this address. We're going to take down the address right here. I'm going to copy that. Um, as I said, obviously you could do this with anything else, but for this example, we're just going to use this um, kernel version string, and I'm going to just cancel this disassembly. Um, so we're going to put this address in right here. Now, I know what you may be thinking, what about KSLR or KASLR in the kernel? Now, this obviously will be a huge issue. issue. It will affect the randomization of this address. So this address, the kernel version string, will not be located here in the live kernel unless you add the ASLR slide to this address to calculate the live address. Now, um, if you watched the previous video, which I already did mention, this actually shows you how to exploit a vulnerability in the kernel that gives you the ability to calculate this slide and add it to any address. So I won't be covering that in this video since I did already make this video for that. So go and watch this if you wanna know how to defeat ASLR. And then you can implement the function that I show you guys how to write here in this tool as well. And then add the slide to, so you just add slide to this address or whatever address you're targeting. I won't be doing that in this video obviously because that will make it a bit too lengthy, but that is what actually happens behind the scenes. If you wanna target an address, you will need to know the ASLR slide. Um, anyway, so next you will need to uh, put the bytes that you want to actually write to this address. So again, we're gonna do a typecast to VM address T. And this will be this time the actual data, now I didn't actually name this, uh, I'm not sure what I was thinking there, but we're just gonna call this data. And then you wanna put the data um, by reference again, so data here. And then finally, the last argument will be the actual length of data that we wanna write. So for this, we can just calculate it with size of, and then pass data. And that there, that function call will, or should, as long as you've uh, obviously added the slide correctly, it should write the these bytes, the 41414141, to the address in the kernel that you have specified. Um, again, you can actually put this into an if statement to check that it did work. So um, we'll just do if around that. And if it did return something, now in this case, it should return zero if it worked. So if it returns anything else, then there again is an error. So we'll just print out error. 
So for reading kernel memory, it's pretty much the same process, but instead using VM read, um, and you basically do the same thing. You send the kernel task pool, you specify an address plus the kernel slide that you want to read data from, specify an amount of data you want to read, and then specify a buffer that the data will be sent into. So that works basically the same way. I won't be showing that uh, for you guys right now, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to find out more about that. Um, anyway, now I'm going to show you guys an app that I actually built, a GUI app that uses this basic idea of accessing the kernel task port and then being able to read and write memory. Um, and it puts it into kind of a, an easy to use GUI application. So you can see the UI is not very good, but it does allow you to do, um, it allows it to be basically easier to use. So you can see here we have right at the top, it tells you what the kernel slide is. So that uses the exploit that I mentioned in the other video. So if you want to do that, go to the other video, look at the code there, and that's what I'm using for this. And uh, then it allows you to uh, enter a uh, set of data or bytes. So it allows you takes in four bytes at a time and will write it to an arbitrary address. So I'm going to enter 4141414141. And then we're going to use the address of the kernel version string for the example. Um, so that address is 802D732C. Now, the good thing about this is it actually allows you to put in the static address. So the way you would copy and paste it from the kernel cache file. And then when you actually click the right button, it will automatically add the kernel slide to that address for you. So you don't have to be responsible for the calculation. So it's very simple. Then you're just going to click the pink right button and you can see it gives you this little success message alert telling you that it's, wrote the, it's written the bytes to that specified address. And now we can check that it did indeed work by going inside a mobile terminal, typing in uname-a, running that command. And you can see now the version string for the kernel, instead of it saying Darwin, uh, the first four letters have been overwritten with capital A's. So there's a little bit of quick proof that it does work. So you can obviously write more bytes than uh, than this and change the whole version string and obviously do it to many other places in the kernel, not just for data related things, but for actually patching instructions. So that's basically what this app does. I'll probably leave a link to this somewhere when I've uh, made it a bit more, uh, gave, it, gave it a few more features. Um, but if you do want to experiment with this, as I said, I'll leave a couple of links as well about the VM read if you want to manipulate with that. Um, and follow me on Twitter if you want to see some updates because I'm actually working on a tool that uses this idea, but it allows people to actually practice return-oriented programming or ROP at a kernel level without having to really exploit real vulnerabilities, but instead it basically puts in some fake or artificial kernel vulnerabilities to allow you to exploit a little bit easier, so for educational purposes. So if you're interested in that, then follow me on Twitter and you should see some updates on that. I also probably have some more videos coming out when I get some more stuff uh, working with all that. But um, that is pretty much it for this video. So if you have any questions about this, then I'll be happy to help. Leave a comment or tweet me at BLS1000. And yeah, that is it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.